everybody, I am Nico D. I am back at testing single board computers. So in this video we are gonna take a look at Armbian Hirsute. So Armbian Hirsute is the newest version of Ubuntu. So Ubuntu 2104. This comes with a lot of improvements, but not everything is better. It does look a lot cleaner than Ubuntu Focal. So I will show the three desktops that are available to download. So these are XFCE. Cinnamon and the Budgie desktop. So let's start with the XFCE4 desktop. So to download we of course go to the Armbian downloads page. We choose our boards. We go down to the recommended downloads. And here we see all the Hirsute images. So choose the one you want. So I'm gonna choose Hirsute XFCE desktop. So this comes with kernel 5.13. It is still at unstable status. This is because it is still in testing phase, but I found fixes for most of my problems. So for me it is already perfect to use. So once it is downloaded, all we need to do is extract it. So I'm here in Linux, so I'm gonna use XZ for this. So all I need to do is type XZ dash dash decompress and then the file name, so armbian 2108 and press tab and enter. So again I'm in Linux so I'm gonna use GNOME disks to burn it onto my SD cards. You can use whatever you want. So if you are in Windows you can use Win32 Disk Imager or Balina Etcher. There is also SD Writer, I think it's called like that, for Linux. So we select the correct device, so my SD card. To be sure I plugged it out and plugged it back in to see what was disappearing. So I know I'm right. And we write the image onto the SD card. So once that is done we can insert our SD card into our device or EMMC if you use that. So the first boot will take some time before you can log in. This is because it is expanding the file system. So once that is done you get greeted with this window and you were asked for a password for the root password and repeat that password. Then choose your shell. So I choose bash because I'm used to using bash I should try zsh. Then we choose our username without capital letters and again two times a new password for our user. And then our real name, so for me that is Nico D with the capital D. There is a small bug in here, if you press backspace it will show as a spacebar has been used. But it does recognize the backspace while you don't see it as it has happened. So here it done the correct thing, it is Nico D with a capital D. It captured it like it has to be, but it looks wrong here. So that's a small bug, but it is hard to find the cause of this. So now we can boot into our desktop for the first time. So I am using Wi-Fi, so the first thing I do is connect my Wi-Fi. And of course we do sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade to have a fully updated system. So while that is happening I can show you what is installed by default. So a few small things have changed in the look. So a few of the file icons have changed a little bit. They look a little bit more sharp. So of course we've got all the settings over here. Then accessories. So here we've got notepads, caffeine, fonts, midnight commander, notepads QQ, terminator. Then we've got development, so here we've got builder, genie, melt, again notepad QQ, rec etcher, search tool, then graphics, there we've got document scanner, document viewer, so the GNU image manipulation program, so GIMP, LibreOffice Draw, Pinta and the Vuneer. So that's a nice collection of graphical programs. So then internet, we've got Chromium web browser pre-installed and Firefox web browser pre-installed. We also have got Thunderbird mail and transmission for torrent files. So then multimedia, celluloid, Kazam. Kazam is very easy to use to do screen capture. Then MPV to play video, Pulse audio to set up your audio. 
Then Office, the complete suite of LibreOffice is installed, so LibreWriter, Maths, Impress, Draw, Calc, Base and the Document Viewer. Then Other is Score Copy, I don't know what that is, I should check it out. And then System, there we've got GDB, Gported, HTOP, again Midnight Commander, the Task Manager, I don't like this Task Manager, it is way too limited, and Terminator, and the other terminals. So we do have got a bit more programs pre-installed, so perfect for any desktop user. And now let me show you one problem we've got here in Hirsut. This is the same for every desktop, so for XFCE, for Cinnamon and also for Budgie. So I open a file manager and I just plugged in a USB stick, but it isn't showing up. And the same if I go here to go and then browse network, then I get an error, failed to browse the network, operation not supported. So that isn't good, I use this a lot here at home because I've got two NAS devices. And I need to be able to browse into them with my file manager. So the fix is very simple. I didn't have to search for long for it. So all we need to do is sudo apt install gvfs-backends. And then we restart and after we reboot everything should be fine. Here you now can see my USB stick is recognized and you can also see the network folder. So that is good, that is fixed. I've already made sure this will be added for the next release, so next download this will not be necessary. So if you watch this in a few weeks after it came out, you will not have to do this. Something we have now by default that is awesome is accelerated web browsing. So Chromium is hardware accelerated, only not video decoding is hardware accelerated, but it can play video at 1080p with GPU acceleration. So we are using the Panfrost driver, so let me show you here. So GLX info dash B. So we are using the Panfrost driver version 21.3.0. Things have improved a lot in the last years with this driver. I really love it to have this. We used to not have good graphics drivers for the RK3399 or other socks. There are others that can use the Panfrost driver too. And it is such a huge difference that we can now use this. We can now play games on it. We can use web accelerated browsing. So that is awesome. So here you can see that everything is hardware accelerated. So only the video decoding is software only. I hope this will also come soon. Then we might be able to play 4K video in YouTube. Now let's check a YouTube video, the one that I recorded last week about my new computer. I noticed that there is no sound over HDMI, so all I need to do is disable the second audio device. So go to volume control, go to configuration and there the seconds I set to off and now the sound works. So today we are going to compare four different SBCs with the FS partition that can be reached by uh, uh, Windows and Linux. So that's how I configured everything. So now let's show it. Here we go. So this plays perfect at 1080p, there are almost no dropped frames, but at 1440p it doesn't play perfect. With overclocking you can watch some YouTube videos in 1440p, like those from LTT, but I'm already happy to be able to watch at 1080p with an SBC. XFC4 is my favorite desktop environment because it is very customizable and of course I don't want it to look like this. I want a bit more, I want my information about my CPU on the taskbar. So let's configure it like I want it. So the first thing to do is to install the XFC4 goodies. 
So sudo apt install xfc4-goodies and I also like the MATI system monitor so I also install that. So this is the default task manager in XFCE and it just doesn't tell you much. So the next thing to do is add a new panel. So I right click on my upper panel and go to panel and there panel preferences. There I add one, I drop it to the bottom. I make the length 100%, the row size to 40 and I lock the panel. Then I go to items and there I add my apps. So two launchers, one separator, two times CPU frequency monitor, CPU graph. No more the generic monitor, we've got something better for that. So I do add the keyboard layouts because I use two different layouts, English, UK and Belgium. I add places and screenshots. Then system loads monitor. The window buttons and where is the other one? Oh, here it is sensor plugin and now I start arranging everything so with the sensor plugin here you can see CPU thermal and you can see it is at 36 degrees right now so I choose that I select it and in view I set show title out and show labels and I do it too large and in miscellaneous don't forget that I set it to update at one second every one second so as you see now I've got a nice looking temperature monitor I arrange everything a bit I, I expand my separator and make it transparent My window buttons goes before the separator. Screenshot is the first thing. Then places. I've done this so many times. So my keyboard layouts. Then with the CPU frequency monitors. The last one I set to CPU 5. And the first one I set to CPU 0. This way it shows the frequency of the big cores. And also from the small cores. Now my two launchers, one launcher I use for my terminal, so terminal emulator and the other launcher I use for the MATI system monitor, no not there, there and here we type MATI and then you can select MATI system monitor. Okay, if we click on this now and we see this. So here you can see what is happening with every CPU core separately. So that's it. All I need to do is my upper taskbar remove the window buttons and I also add a network monitor and this will monitor my VLAN 0 so my onboard Wi-Fi if you use a cable then it is something else ETH 0 I think and I set my network monitor over there and this is how I like to have my XFCE4 to look. It might not be for everybody, but I just love the look of this. I see everything what I need to see. I see my temperature. I see the clock speeds of my CPUs. I see what is happening. I see how much memory I've got left. So for me that is very important and I just love how it is. So this is how Focal XFC4 looked like with the same taskbar apps. So certainly for the taskbar apps they have got newer versions and they look a lot more modern. So if we go back to how Hirsut looks, you see this looks a little bit more modern. It all feels a bit better. I like it a lot. But this does come at a price. So armed in Hirsut with the XFC4 desktop uses about 693 megabytes of memory at boot. This versus Armbian Focal with the XFC4 desktop and all the same apps uses 638 megabytes. So this is a difference of about 50 megabytes. I can also say that my taskbar apps also utilize 50 megabytes. Buster uses the least of the memory, so 530 megabytes. Then Armbian Hirsut with the Cinnamon desktop uses 809 megabytes, so this is the most. 
an Armin Hirschut with the Bungie desktop uses 757 MB. So XFCE4 uses the least memory of all three desktops. And of course I've done a lot of benchmarks. I didn't think I would see any difference between the desktops, but I do see a difference. So the Bungie desktop is the fastest desktop of all three. So this boat with 7-zip and also with the Blender Nico D render. So the Hirsuit's Bungie at 1.4 GHz gets 7941 MIPS versus 7760 MIPS of XFCE4 and 7766 MIPS of Cinnamon. So Cinnamon and XFCE4 perform almost the same, but Bungie performs a little better. Also, Armbian Focal performs better than Armbian Hirsuit. This is quite a difference. In Blender it is more than 1 minute faster than the XFCE4 Hirsuit. So Armbian Hirsuit XFCE4 did Blender in 14 minutes 41 seconds and Armbian Focal XFCE4 did it in 13 minutes and 29 seconds. This for the same clock speeds when overclocked. Hirsuit did it in 13 minutes 21 and Focal did it in 12 minutes 53. So Armbian Focal clearly is faster than Armbian Hirsuit. But Armbian Hirsuit does look a little better. It is more modern. I do like it a lot. So I am now going to install Armbian Hirsuit XFCE4 on my NVMe on my NanoPi M4. I am convinced of it. It really feels a lot better. To install it to my NVMe drive it is very simple. I open a terminal and I type sudo armbian-config. My password. There we go to system, then install, and here I choose the third option, boot from EMMC, system on SATA, USB or NVMe. I do have an EMMC module installed, but I was working on an SD card, so I had to watch out what I had to choose. If I would have chosen boot from SD cards, then I would always need the SD cards inserted to be able to boot from my NVMe drive. So that is all, everything will take a while before it is finished. So that's it for this video for today. I am not gonna show you Cinnamon or the Bungie desktop today. The video is already too long. And there's also a lot of information I can tell about the other desktops. So my favorite desktop clearly is the XFCE4 desktop. I love it like it is set up in my way. I really do not like the Bungie desktop. It does perform a little better than all the others. The Cinnamon desktop is quite nice, but it isn't perfect for me. So that's it for today. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all will like my video. See you all later. Bye.